Welcome to Grounds Few Dare to Tread as we unlock the secrets of Old Juliet Prison. Join us as we abandon daylight and pursue the dark mysteries lurking in the shadows of this now abandoned prison where psychopaths and killers once dwelled and confined. We will expose the obscure records and accounts from the prison's guards and inmates driven to reveal the untold truth of this notorious penitentiary. We'll disclose the sinister experiments, bizarre escape attempts, body snatchers, executions, riots, and the prison's notorious residents like Babyface Nelson and John Wayne Gacy. We'll also discover the shocking link between Joliet and the murder of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uncovering stories that blur the line between brilliance and depravity, where madness and evil converge. The secrets of Joliet Prison await. Let's set the stage. We walk through the vast prison yard with its towering walls and then ventured into the prison's dark, dank cells where a heavy scent envelops you, a musty mixture accented by a faint metallic tang of rust-eaten metal. The dystopian beauty and its creative graffiti remain untouched, adding to the foreboding atmosphere. The neglect is part of the story. It's easy to see through the long rows of cells ripped from the silver screen's darkest dreams, lightless, airless tombs where the sound of dripping water taps out a monotonous rhythm, and decaying paint cascades in ribbons from above, creating a scene out of your worst nightmares. Sound and light cut off alarmingly in places, an abandoned brick lies mysteriously by itself on the floor, like so many things we saw behind the limestone walls. A little history first. Before Joliet's opening in 1858, the only area of prison was Alton, which became notorious for its inhumane conditions. Alton Federal Military Prison opened in 1833 as Illinois' first penitentiary. Within Alton's walls, conditions deteriorated and disease took hold and the infamous prison shut down in 1857. However, in 1862, the U.S. government, in their infinite wisdom, reopened Alton to incarcerate Confederate prisoners during the Civil War. With Union and Confederate soldiers overflowing its cells, tragedy struck. Outbreaks of smallpox, rubella, and pneumonia claimed over 1,500 lives. Weary of the ceaseless troubles, Reformer Dorothea Dix advocated for its closure in 1860. Alton's last prisoners were finally transferred to the promised hope within Joliet's new walls. Famed architect W.W. Boynton, designer of Chicago's iconic water tower, planned the imposing limestone structures with their intimidating turrets and battlements. 53 men arrived to a peculiar temporary cell, barely large enough for three grown men at just 28 square feet, with ceilings barely high enough to stand. This cramped space would be their makeshift home while constructing the full prison around themselves using local limestone mined just hundreds of feet away. Limestone was chosen because it was considered fireproof and discouraged prisoners making escape tunnels. The men quarried stone by day, building their own cells block by block, enclosing themselves within a 25-foot high, 16-acre wall. By night, they retired to sparse bunks and two makeshift buckets, one for water, one for waste. The conditions were bleak, but in time, the haunting Gothic facade took shape. Upon its opening on May 22, 1858, the Chicago Tribune declared, We came away fully impressed with the belief that the important trusts at Joliet are in good hands, that there is growing a state work which will be for long years to come the pride of her citizens. In the decades after its hopeful beginnings, Joliet Prison's facade became a mask for the growing turmoil within. As inmate populations swelled, the prison's progressive vision strained under the pressure. By 1872, over 1,200 men crowded her cells, well over its intended capacity. Just six years later, 
nearly 2,000 men called the aging prison home. Now horrifically overcrowded, men were doubled into cells. There was little ventilation, sparse sunlight, no running water until the 1940s, and no toilets until the 1950s. Disease spread unchecked. Guards and criminals alike abused the helpless inmates who were regularly chained in closets and cellars, enduring physical torment for slight infractions. Those with mental illnesses were thrown in with the general population, denied any respite or treatment. By day, prisoners labored together in grim workshops that exploited their misery for profit. Exhausted prisoners were forced into repetitive tasks in silence, collapsing onto hard beds to choke down rations of stale bread and brackish water. Joliet brutally crushed the souls of all who entered. Old Joliet's darkest chapters unfolded in 1878, when inmate Gus Reed was thrust into national infamy. Confined in solitary for breaking rules, Reed's noisy behavior enraged authorities. Under chilling orders, guards ruthlessly gagged Reed with a crude broomstick and chained his wrists outside the bars. Within half an hour, an ominous silence fell. Investigating, guards made a horrific discovery. Reed convulsing as the gag strangled him. In his final moments, Reed's voice pierced the stillness, repeatedly crying out his own name and etching the grim event into the prison's history. A prisoner once seized opportunity during the convict's funeral, attempting a daring coffin escape. When an inmate died in the prison hospital, his pine coffin was prepared for burial. At noon, a cunning prisoner named Kennedy slipped into the dead house stashing the deceased body and crafting air holes inside the coffin to hide within. After the funeral service, Kennedy's flawed plan unraveled as inadequate air suffocated him. Desperate, he cracked the lid to breathe, but the startled hearse driver leapt up, slamming it shut. Kennedy burst out, vanishing in with the other inmates, his brazen scheme exposed. In December 1877, two medical students, Edward Woodruff and Byron Elms, were arrested in Juliet for a chilling crime, body snatching. A dismembered, decapitated corpse of an inmate from Juliet Prison was found in their possession, along with his defaced headboard from the old convict cemetery. The students' explanations seemed ripped from a macabre playbook. They claimed to attend a Chicago medical school and had ventured into the prison graveyard by train, intent on procuring a cadaver for their studies over the Christmas break. Surprisingly, after a tense confrontation, their professor intervened and they were released. The remains reverently returned to the bluff. In the late 1960s, controversial medical experiments came to a disturbing end at Juliet Prison within the walls of the prison hospital. The Army set its sights on a new source of test subjects, Vietnam draft resistors held at Juliet. Lured by the promise of early release, many young men volunteered for the chilling experiments. Behind closed doors, they were asked to ingest vile milkshakes contaminated with human waste. The Army had especially interested in Hepatitis A because it was a classic disease of overcrowding and unsanitary conditions common in prisons and military camps. In 1975, the Black P. Stones, an organized crime group from Chicago, took over a cell block in Juliet Prison. They held several correctional officers hostage and demanded that they not be separated and transferred to other prisons. The organization had gained too much power within Joliet, and authorities were conspiring to break them up by sending high-ranking gang members to other prisons. The prison warden spoke to the inmates through the intercom system. He attempted to de-escalate the situation and assured the prisoners that they wouldn't be hurt. He sent a former Black Peastone member, Herbert Cadillac Collette, 
it to negotiate. Cadillac was murdered by the Stones. The warden later came out to speak to the rioters and delivered a speech to the organizing inmates while standing in a pool of Cadillac's blood. The situation was resolved shortly afterwards. And before we get to some other famous inmates, please do us a favor and give us a like and subscribe on this video. It sure would help us out. In 1924, darkness descended on the University of Chicago's prestigious halls. Two brilliant students, 19-year-old Nathan Leopold and 18-year-old Richard Loeb, hatched a plot driven by delusions of superiority. For months, they secretly planned the perfect crime, kidnapping and murdering a boy while seeking ransom. The victim was Loeb's own 14-year-old cousin, Bobby Franks. Luring him into their car, they attacked, disposed of the body in a lake, and disfigured his face with acid. Panic erupted when the boy vanished. Leopold, posing as George Johnson, contacted the family demanding ransom, but their perfect plan quickly collapsed. The body was found, and Leopold's rare glasses at the scene implicated him. Both confessed, each blaming the other as Frank's killer. Their motive? Curiosity about the thrill of the perfect crime. Depression-era gangster Babyface Nelson, known for his boyish looks belying a ruthless heart, was briefly jailed at Joliet. Born Lester Joseph Gillis, he earned the Babyface moniker for his youthful appearance contrasting his icy brutality. In 1931, Nelson and his tape bandits, who bound wealthy victims with tape before robbing them, were arrested. Behind Joliet's walls, the cunning deviant slipped free during a transfer and escaped into the night. Befriending fellow outlaws Dillinger and Floyd, Babyface resumed his life of crime until federal agents gunned him down in 1934 after a bloody shootout. The Lukert factory was owned by German immigrant Adolf Lukert. At the time of the murder, he was considered the sausage king of Chicago. Lukert had money woes, and despite his marriage, courted a wealthy widow as a means of financial relief. To further his relationship with the widow, he murdered his wife, Louise. Lukert boiled Louise's body in lye and then burned the remains in the factory furnace where her engraved wedding ring and bone fragments were found by investigators. This created a local legend that he had ground his wife into sausage and sold her to unsuspecting customers. In 1942, John Wayne Gacy was born in Chicago. By the 1970s, working as a contractor in party clown Pogo, his depravity surfaced. One by one, lured back to his suburban home, young men and boys met unimaginable horrors. In a secret crawl space, Gacy buried his victims below his feet. In 1978, suspicion fell on the clown after a local boy vanished. Police searched, finding the first remains stashed under the home. His spree claimed 33 souls. Briefly imprisoned in Joliet, in 1980, Gacy faced justice condemned to death at nearby Statesville. For years, he awaited execution, finally meeting his end in 1994. On April 4, 1968, in Memphis, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the civil rights icon, was fatally shot on the Lorraine Motel balcony. The culprit? James Earl Ray, a petty thief from Alton, Illinois, where the original state prison stood. Ray's criminal exploits included a bungled 1952 robbery where he left his wallet behind, landing him in Joliet Prison for a time. In July 1967, Ray brazenly robbed Alton's bank of $30,000, money suspected of funding his escape overseas after killing King. Using aliases, Ray rented rooms near the Lorraine Motel, providing a vantage point to assassinate King that fateful evening. Eerily calm, Ray fled the murder scene. Though Ray pled guilty, he later claimed a conspiracy involving a man named Raoul. 
Hiring an attorney, Ray spun inconclusive polygraph results into conspiracy claims. Ray died in prison in 1998, cloaked in lingering questions. Over the years, the prison struggled, receiving thousands of complaints about appalling conditions. Reports of everything from rats and cockroaches to overpopulation and lack of opportunities for the inmates to improve themselves. With the stroke of a pen by Governor George Ryan, Old Joliet Prison was shuttered in 2002, its imposing limestone walls finally falling silent. The old prison stands today as an empty reminder of the long road Illinois has traveled in its quest for justice and reform. The Old Joliet Prison is open to self-guided tours, flashlight tours, and guided prison after dark tours. We have more info on this in our video description. If you found this video intriguing, hit the like and subscribe button to see more fascinating historical deep dives. Let us know in the comments what other famous moments in American history you want us to cover next. We may just make a video on it. So click subscribe and stay tuned for more mysterious tales from the past. Thanks for watching.